the word of God has come. And the Bible says, when my word comes down. Look at it in the book of Isaiah. Chapter 55. Isaiah. Chapter 55. Verse 10. For as the rain cometh down. And the snow from heaven. And returneth not theater. But watereth the earth. And make it bring forth and bud. That it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word be. That goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void. But it shall accomplish that which I please. And it shall prosper in the thing whereunto I sent it. The mystery writing was sent to this earth. At the time it came, in the days of Daniel, it accomplished something for Jesus. For God. Now it came in our day. It addressed itself to the Methodist church. I want to say it has accomplished something for Jesus. Yeah. Amen. The part of Methodist Church that accepted this message, United Methodist Church, although the message for all Methodist churches, the part of the United Methodist Church that accepted this revelation invited me to go and teach them truth, righteousness, and holiness. They are ready to work together with holiness revival movement. They believe the message came from God. And it was a wonderful time. All their preachers were gathered together to be taught. It was, in fact, they said it was like a seminary. Eyes were open to truth. Ah, yes, that's the truth you knew before. But that truth was removed from them. And the people in the, in the city too came forth for crusade. About 1,500 of them. And the Lord gave them the word of life. Praise the Lord. And uh, I want my wife to share the testimony with you. Because it will bring forth another testimony. Amen. To open it up. As the program proceeded, during prayer, the Lord gave her an encounter with the demon of Methodist Church that came out of, like, the underneath the church and shook himself, and there was great dust coming out of, the, out of his body. And he said, I've been here for a long time. Since John Wesley met it to heaven with others, as he brought this message, we made sure nobody will go again. My wife will continue. You're welcome. We're welcoming Sister Linda to come forth and share testimony to the glory of the Father, of the Son. And of the Holy Ghost. Everlasting Father, we thank you for today. We give you all the honor. We give you all the praise. Thank you for being with us. We thank you for this revelation. We pray the Lord, may you win souls for you in Jesus' name. May the power of God come upon it in the name of Jesus. May it open our eyes more.
more and more in the name of Jesus. May this testimony, may this revelation bless many people in the mighty name of Jesus and win many souls for you in the mighty name of Jesus. I cover this revelation with the blood of Jesus. I cover ourselves with the blood of Jesus. I pray the Lord you will speak through me to your children in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you for what you are going to do. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. Please be seated. I greet you all in the name of Jesus. I pray that the Lord will bless us all in Jesus' name. I want to share a revelation the Lord gave me on the 17th of May, 2018, when we were in Taraba State, Jalingo. But the program started in, in Jalingo on Friday. But when we went to Taraba State, on Wednesday, the program started in Zin before we went to Jalingo, Taraba State, capital city. So when we went to Zin, it was Methodist Church that invited Daddy to come there and preach the gospel, teach their leaders the way of God. So we went there on Wednesday, and Pastor Paul Rica preached, and they were very happy. The following day was on Thursday, which on the 17th of May, 2018, and I was supposed to testify that evening, and then daddy preached in the morning. After the morning service, he now said we should pray. All of us stood up and they would start praying. So as we were busy praying, it was a serious prayer. As we were praying that morning service in Zin, after the preaching, we entered into serious prayer. As I closed my eyes, we were busy praying. As I closed my eyes, then I saw this vision appear to me. I saw a store. At the basement of the church. It was like that. It's, a, it's like a basement under where we were praying. And then I had a sound coming out from that store. Making sound coming out from that store. Like a pig. I thought that it was a pig coming out. And then the, the sound was <coughs> like that. Was coming out from that place. Then I saw a short, fearful demon coming out, looking fearful and dirty. He turned towards the door of going out and was saying this word. I was standing and I saw him coming out of the store from the basement. And, it, and as he was coming out, he was making a sound like a pig. So I thought that it was a pig that is there. But when he came out, it was... A demon, dirty, short demon, very fearful. Different from the demon I saw for the Lord choosing. Different. This was another demon looking, fearful looking face. So as he came out of that place, he was going out to the door outside, like he wanted to go outside. I was standing looking at it, very fearful. And then what I was hearing him saying, before he went outside, he was saying, who is preaching that truth? He was really concerned with the noises hearing up the, the auditorium, the church auditorium. He was like, who is preaching that truth here? Who brought this doctrine of the light here? Have I not programmed these people on what they should say, do or preach? Have closed their place, have closed the place. That is talking about the church. He have closed the place. Who opened the place? He was really concerned. He was standing and was, what am I hearing of? It's like this, this message or the message he's hearing, it's like this is not his place. He's not supposed to preach that kind of message here. And how did this message come in? Because the place is closed. And he said, how did they come to know the truth? He was asking himself, talking on his own, like when you are standing behind somebody and person is talking on his own. So he was asking, how did these people come to know this truth after he have programmed them what they should say, what they should preach, and what they should do? And why are they preaching another thing? And this is the truth that he don't want them to preach. Then he was now saying, how did they come to know the truth and the way to the truth? But... We have brainwashed them, blind them, and they are tied. He was confused. These people, we have brainwashed them. We have tied them. We have blinded their eyes. He was still asking himself, how did they able to know this truth? What is happening? And then he now said, 
the power I am feeling in this place now is not from us. It's like when the, when the prayer is going on, the, the people have repented, the message they have had, the prayer of righteous prayer calling on Jesus, save us. It's like the power of God take over the, the church all over the auditorium. So he was now saying that the power he is feeling in this place is not from them. So there's another strength power that have come into it. And then they say, hey, I am in, I'm in trouble. I was sleeping, relaxing, believing that my work is permanent and has finished. I have tied them, closed all the entrance for that truth not to come in. And it has been like that for years. Hmm, I'm in trouble. So when he noticed that, maybe he noticed that this message that is coming is the truth. And he knows that this is the truth. God has come inside. He's in trouble. He's a gatekeeper and trouble has come on him because it's like they told them not to open the door for the truth. So now he is saying that, ha, trouble has come upon me. Ha, how did these people know this truth? And I, I was shaking where I was standing because of what he was saying. And me, myself, I was like, ah, in a church like this, filled with activities of everyday prayer, worshiping God, they are doing their service. How come a demon will be living in this place they do not know? Then how come a demon will be honing them, saying, these are my people? I was really confused. I said, ah, this demon is staying under this church, and this church is saying it's a church of God, and they are preaching Jesus. They say they are doing the right thing. But how comes a demon will be staying here? So as I was busy thinking about that, his conversation started with, he was talking to himself. Then, as he was going out, when he, he, he stood like this, he was talking, ah, how did they able to know this truth? What am I here in this place? But I've brainwashed them now. How did they come to know this truth? He was having a padlock and a chain in his hand. He was standing and was confused. So he was like, let me go up and see. So as he was going out to the other door, he turned and saw me. And then he said, it's you people and shook his body like this like when a, a chicken came out from a dusty place and would be shaking it, its body like that when he shook his body there was a heavy dust that come out of his body and he said to me have you seen the dust coming out of my body to tell you that I have been here for long no one will take me out of this place and take these people from me or send me away. I have nurtured them for long. They are mine. My spell is inside them. Our master, I've told us about you people. That is talking about our remote people, holiness of our movement. Uh, my master, I've told us when he say us, you know that all the demons, Satan and his demon, have told us about you people. Going around, opening the eyes of people, we have captured. You are busy spoiling our work. They told us never to allow you people to come to any of us territory in these denominations. Other denominations, Satan have warned them that they should never allow Holiness of our movement to come close to those denominations that they are guiding. And he said, and we, that he the demons, knock his chest and say, and we have succeeded to do so to many, but we have put hatred in many denominations towards you people. We have put pride that many pastors, many denominations are seeing that it's a, it's a disrespectful thing. It's, it's looking pride to them. How can a, a small denomination, church, come and teach us what is right? We are putting pride in them that they should never see people as the way. And we have made them to be in fear that we have brainwashed them that if you allow them, they will come and scatter your church. They will carry your people. So these three things we have deposited in denomination towards or more. And it's working for our good. Many have hated you people. And it's working. But how comes you people come into my own territory? Hmm. No, no. 
it can never work. He was pointing at me. There was a distance between me and him. Me, I was standing looking at him. He was pointing at me. I said, no, it can never work. Other places all over we have won not to encourage you people. And how come you people come to my own territory in the demon because he's under trouble now? No, it can never work. I will spoil all the work, the truth you people have brought here. Oh, I'm in trouble. I'm in trouble. I was sleeping. I saw him with chains and padlock in his arm. He continued his speech. Angrily, he was telling me that you people cannot tell them the truth. I am going to scatter this work. He was very angry with me. And then he now said to me, their former leader, that is John Wesley, their former leader caused us a lot of problems by carrying the people to the lights and many escaped from us to heaven. So we tried to get him, that is John Wesley, when he was alive, and to spoil his work, but we cannot until he is dead. Then we came in. After the death of John Wesley, he was trying to tell me that these people that he have been here capturing them, that this thing have been during the time of John Wesley, they were trying to spoil the work of John Wesley, that they are angry with what John Wesley did, that teaching people the truth. And many people, by the truth of John Wesley, removed them from the darkness and carried them to the light, which is Jesus. And many make heaven. And he spoiled their work at the time of his days, which was John Wesley in their time, that John Wesley scattered the work of the devil. And because of that, Satan said to, to them, all the demons, that what this man has done to us, we have tried to spoil his work, now he has died and he has made it to heaven. We are going to make sure that all this work will go in vain. This Methodist people, we are going to capture them. They are going to be under our control. He is going to regret it for spoiling our work. So he, the demon was telling me this thing. So we tried to get him, but we cannot. And then he said, after his death, we, the demons, as he was talking, we, them, came in sending their own people and doctrines, ideas, making his doctrine, John Wesley, look hard. He said, after John Wesley dead, he dared the demon now send their own people, which are their own demonic, satanic people call themselves human beings into Methodist church as they enter into the church the Methodist church they brought the demonic doctrines and ideas and one of the ideas they brought to Methodist church is to tell them that the doctrine of John Wesley is too hard, they cannot be able to practice it and by that they, they modernize it. They, instead of following the right way, they modernize it, making it simple for them. And by that, we capture them for long, all over. Methodist Church belongs to us. That righteous man has departed for long. That is talking about Jesus. He was still pointing at me so that all these things he's telling me is for me to know that my work. All in the movement work. We know work here because it's not today they have captured Methodist Church. And then he now told me that the righteous man, that is Jesus, have departed from this church for long. We are in charge. Who brought you people here? No, not in this place. He now said they are in charge of Methodist Church. And he was asking me, who brought you people in this Methodist branch in Zim? That it will not work. I am going to deal with them seriously. He's going to deal with the people. He was talking, the way he was talking, is like these are his children. I am going to deal with them seriously. I'm going to punish them. I'm going to capture those ones that have accept that truth and the light you people have brought here. I have all of them in my list. You can see what the demon is saying. All the members, leaders in that church, he have their names on his list. And we know those that believe and accept your doctrine that you brought to them, the truth. He is going to check the list. Those that accept 
Jesus and give their life to the truth and believe the truth, he's going to check the list and see those ones and he's going to deal with them. I am going to bring problems to them and add and deal with them. He was saying that he's going to deal with that denomination, that church, Methodist church in Zin, in Taraba Sai. That why did they allow to bring the truth which or the more holiness of our moment brought to them to teach them? And those that accept and believe and say, oh, I surrender, he's going to check their name on the list and he's going to deal with them seriously. As for you people, I know what you can do. That is holiness of our movement. He was pointing at me. As for you people, I know what you can do. We know you people and we are ready for you people. We have started with you people. No matter what, how long it takes, we will scatter you people. We will kill the revival all over. We shall win. Hmm. We shall win in knock his chest. Many will not escape. He's talking about the revival we are going around, bringing people to the truth. And he was boasting that many of these people we are saying they are saved, and many people in this movement, they will not escape. They will not escape all over the world. As for denominations, many, many denominations is for us. And many non-denominations, likewise. You people cannot spoil our work. We will see. He now dragged himself out. Like leaving me where I was standing, he was going out to continue. He want to go and see what is happening there. As he dragged himself out, up into the auditorium, I saw us still praying. Why is me I'm praying? In this vision, I saw us again. We are still praying. And then I saw Pastor Porica gathering and he was telling the people to pray. Everybody was praying. And then I saw the demon drag himself up to the auditorium. And as soon as he saw us praying and saw Pastor Paul Rica, I look at his face. The demon gathered his face like he hated the person he seen talking and was praying. He gathered his face and was breathing fastly up and down <sighs> like that. As soon as he entered the church, daddy Pastor Porica was praying, was praying. Everybody was praying. I look at the people. We were praying. The people were praying. Me, I was seeing this vision. The demon was standing by the doorside, looking in the auditorium. And as soon as he turned to look, who is this person that is preaching, talking this truth here? He saw Pastor Porica. As soon as he saw him like this, he now gathered his face. It's like he's very angry with the person he's seeing. He now do his face like this, was looking at the leaders, those that were present there. As he said, he's going to check the list. He looked at the face of the leaders. As he was looking at them like this, he was very angry. And then he turned and said that, we want to spoil this work. It can never happen. That is going to rain down all these things that we have said. He's going to scatter it. He's going to brainwash them. He's going to spoil our work. So, as soon as he said this word to me, he now turned his back in a very angry mood and shook his body again very angrily and disappeared. As soon as he disappeared, I was shocked like this when he get disappeared with a heavy dust following him. And then I get myself, I noticed that the prayer started here, people praying. And I said, ah, what, is, what am I seeing? But I did not say anything that time. And I said, ah, a, a demon in this church. So after the prayer finished, we ran out the prayer. Everybody get, went home to come back in the evening by five for the program. So that day I was the one supposed to preach. This thing have happened in the morning around maybe around 11, 12 to 1 because we used to finish maybe 1.30 to 2. So when we get back to the hotel, Pastor Polika now left for Jalingo to go and start Jalingo program. So me, I stay behind in Zing to continue the, the crusade. So I prayed that day, but that thing was still in my mind. I said, ah, how can a church? They are preaching. They say they are preaching because the way they were asking questions, like, you know, this kind of thing. Ah. So I kept it to myself. So that day of the crusade, we went to the field. I supposed to start the program. And then I now saw, okay, let the choir of the church sing praise and worship. As soon as they finished singing praise and worship, Pastor Tafida, 
which is Bauchi coordinator, mount up the pulpit, want to usher me in. By the time you will say, let's pray, let's welcome the Holy Spirit, there was heavy wind from nowhere. Started shaking the, the stage, the pulpit, and the wind was very hard, hard. And then we started hearing rain scatter the crusade. So thank God the crusade ground was not far from the church. And then he now said, let's run to the church. So everybody now start running to the church. Everybody, all of us, we start running to the church. As soon as we enter the church again, the choir, they were setting, setting the thing. So, so the women department, they were singing songs so that the, the electronic, they were able to put departments, they were able to set the camera, whatever thing. Their own touch camera. So speakers and, and microphone. So after some time, Pastor Tafida now said I should mount the pulpit, I should start the testimony. As soon as we were, I was telling the people to stand up so that we can welcome the Holy Spirit in our midst. Water from nowhere flood the church. Enter the church again. Ah, people were raising legs like this. It was a thing that said, ah, where is this water coming from again? Not even a small water. It's like they open a tap. A drum, the water was very plenty in the church. And you cannot expect people to sit in that water to finish a testimony of one or three hours. Because their feet is inside water. You understand? So, they were confused. Ah, water, flood and come down to the pulpit. So, immediately I wanted to say, okay, let's leave this testimony today. And tomorrow we'll continue. Because I was like, if I keep these people, their feet is inside water. And it will not be good. Some will not even concentrate. And it's rain. The place is cold. The water may be cold. So as I wanted to say it to them that we can forget about this testimony tomorrow, we'll do it in a morning service or what. My mind quickly ran to what the demon said in the morning. That is going to scatter the work. That is going to stop. In fact, everything is going to stop. It's going to spoil the work. He was very angry when he was going out. My mind ran there. I said, oh, this can be the plan of this demon. And I told the people, I said, this is the strategy of Satan. We are not going anywhere. This is all part of the price you will pay for God. Because Satan knows that this testimony you are going to hear is going to save many of you. And because when we ask, how many of you have listened to Sister Linda's testimony? Only few. And there were many in the church. There were plenty. But when they say how many people it was, they were not even up to maybe like 20. And the church was full up to maybe, maybe four or 500 people. So I now notice that I say it's because of the testimony you are going to hear today. That's why Satan is doing this distraction. But you are going to tell the devil that even if you want the, the church flood with water and come up to our neck, we will sit down and listen to the message. Is it not so? And everybody say, yes, I should testify. So I now tell them now, stand, put your feet in the water, sit down there. Nothing will wrong with, get wrong with you. Nothing will go wrong in this place today. We must say this testimony. So after we finish that, I pray, I started testifying. After we finish testifying, the water, the rain stop. And then many people give their life to Christ. Many were shocked. It's like they have never had something like that. They were just baffled. One of the pastors texted me that, may God bless you, that we don't know that things like this is happening. We are very, very happy with what you have said. We said it, the youth, everybody was quiet. In the following morning, which was on Friday the 18th, as we were leaving there, we went for the morning service. Many were thanking us. A sister, a youth came to me and was like, Ma, I went to school to study makeup and this, but this your message yesterday made me to be afraid. I don't, I've never had this. So it's a sin. If I start the work, I say, yeah, thank you, ma. Thank you, ma. So you can see what the devil was planning to do. So this is what the Lord showed me about the demon that is in sin. Because the demon led, led me to know that all the churches, Methodist church, round that they allocate demons to guide them. And he said to me again that many denominations, he have his colleagues again that are guiding those denominations. And one of the things he said again is that they, the demons with their master, which is Lucifer, have sent a spell into other denominations. So all this problem we are facing with denomination that we don't want Orimo here. If you are Orimo, leave our church. You cannot allow Orimo to come to your church to preach or that the Rika to come to preach in your church. Now it was in this revelation I came to know that it's not by their power. It's Satan. 
that the demon was telling me that they have sent hatred. That's why it is so. You'll be wondering why these churches they hate or more. What is are we preaching that these people will hate us so much that a church will be telling us we don't want to see any or more member, anything called or more. This that holiness of our movement, pastoral books, some kind of hatred you wonder say, ah, this Christian, but this one make me to know that ah, it's Satan. And the devil was telling me that he have they have sent hatred to some of these denominations, many to hate us, to block us, never to go to their church to teach them the truth. And then they have put pride in them. And many of these things we are seeing. Some pastor will say, who is this small boy to come and teach me the truth? If I don't join remote, will it mean that I will not go to heaven? That is say, I, I cannot take it. I have been in the church for how many years? All this kind of thing. And the devil is saying again that, that they send fear. As for this fear is what is ruining all over my country. Radio. Churches are afraid of, if a remote come, they will capture their members. So because of that, they close their border to a remote. So all these three things the devil said, I sat down, I Think about it. I say this is true. And this is what is happening. And we that are going around preaching, we are seeing this. Many times we are seeing it. From many churches that you don't even expect. Holiness churches you call. You are, you, we are seeing this treaty. Hatred, pride, and fear. We are seeing it in denomination towards or remote. Preaching and love. So when I saw these things, and now when we went to Jalingo on Sunday, the last day of the program, I told daddy, Pastor Paul Rica, he now said I should testify. So I testify. And then, after I finish here the testimony, it will come around by the grace of God. The pastor that carried us there, which was Pastor Alpha, many of you know Pastor Alpha, that was for the mystery writing, the Methodist pastor that carried us there. He, was the, he left behind to finish the program because the program finished everything on Sunday. So he was there to preach in the church, round up everything. And then he said he was going to Abuja, but his mind was like he should branch and say goodbye to us in Jalingo. And then he went to Jalingo. So when he went there on Sunday in the afternoon, we were running up in Jalingo too. So as we were there, as he heard me testifying, he now said that, ah, he remembers something. That after we have left on Sunday, about two people or three, I don't know, God opened their eyes to see a demon. Was very angry and was a woman. God showed her a demon holding cane and said, He's going to flog them in the church seriously. He's going to discipline them. So, three people plus my own now. So, everybody now was seriously praying for Methodist Church in Zim. So, this is what the Lord showed me on the 17th of May, 2018. God bless you. Let's begin to thank God for revealing this truth. The plans of Satan, all their plans will not work. Let's thank the Lord for us to know the demon that is passing through the denomination. Jesus name we pray you can be seated who is on the Lord's side amen, amen. who is on the Lord's side amen. I am on the Lord's side wonderful for the third time who is on the Lord's side I am on the Lord's side. Thank you so much. In me last year, when uh, Methodist women were having their conference in United Methodist Church, massacre, 
a suburb of Abuja, the Lord visited Sister Besta Michael and among other things gave her made her to write some things which she did not understand. Her hand was just writing that thing. It was mystery writing. After the writing, the Lord said, keep this writing and take it to Pastor Paul Rica, the International Director of Holiness Revival Movement. He is the only one in the world that can interpret this writing. It was a message to the Methodist Church. How many of you are aware of this? How many of you have the magazine or the book? Praise the Lord. This is super, the supernatural in our generation. And actually, you know the story. I came back from Canada that time and uh, was told that a supernatural happened somewhere among the Methodists and the Lord gave a mysterious writing and directed the writing to me as the only one that could interpret the writing which was a message to the Methodist church. It was a surprise to me because such a thing had never happened except in the days of Daniel. Altogether, because the Bible has record of Daniel's event, we took the matter to God in prayer. And in the vision of the night, the Lord came and gave interpretation of that writing. The writing was pasted on a board in the night. And Pastor Paul Rica in the vision of the night appeared there and started reading the writing, which we knew it was the Lord himself. Praise the Lord. And so the message of the writing was prepared and delivered. And the Methodist church worldwide were made to know this through the internet. And the United Methodist Church with their, uh, with their headquarters in Jalingo, Taraba State uh, were also given copies of this writing. The bishop in charge was uh, visited and they handed over with the message and the interpretation, the magazine concerned. It was a battle, great battle against holiness revival movement. The bishop said Pastor Porica paid some of their pastors, including the woman that had this supernatural experience to form, uh, formulate this kind of a thing so that they could promote his name. His name could be promoted in the world. Uh, he now went to those people and told them to refute the message, the interpretation, the whole event, to declare that they were not aware of it. They were not involved in it. Because the Methodists, the United Methodists, wanted to take holiness revival movement to court. All arrangement was being done. They replied the letter in the internet. Uh, if you check up there, you will see their reply. So, but something happened previously. This, the United Methodist Church in, in, with the headquarters in Taraba is split into two for some internal problem. So, one group accepted the message. How? About 200 ministers in that group went to the Lord in fasting and prayer and night vigil, as I was told, asking God whether he sent the message. 
the Lord said, I sent it. So, from that time, they consented wholly and started planning to invite me to their site of the Methodist, United Methodist Church so that I could minister to them and do what the word of God had said. It didn't work until this month of me. I gave them, I think, 16, 17, 18 years of me 2018 so we went there praise the lord Hallelujah. it was wonderful they received us gathered their ministers everywhere to come and sit down and listen to pastor paul rica the messenger of the lord and they accepted the message they asked questions and were satisfied one old man said you are a wise man when he, <laughs> after the <laughs> praise the lord after they had asked me all the questions i noticed that there's nothing they can do again than to accept everything i was saying <laughs> he said you are a good teacher they understood the message. They accepted the message. And they accepted joining, that's aligning themselves with Holiness Revival Movement. <laughs> and the, the ministers unanimously made a request that I should make it a yearly program to be coming to them from year to year. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. So, it was there this confrontation with demon came about. The demon of Methodist Church. Not United Methodist Church now. Methodist Church. Offspring of John Wesley. Actually, when I got this, Except the lost program for us is differently. Otherwise, surely, just as he said, Satan is planning very hard to scatter what is going on in holiness revival movement. If he cannot do it in this generation, the generation to come in. It's only we believe in the message and assurance and the messages, prophetic utterances the Lord has been sending that the revival by holiness revival movement shall not end. What shall end it is the rapture. We are the last voice by the Lord to prepare the world for the rapture. Time is no more. Headquarters of the Jews have come back to Jerusalem. And we know some things are going to be happening rapidly after that. Amen? And that is a, a, a end time language. That the Lord, the rapture is at hand. That's end time language. He had been gathering the Jews together and has given them their headquarters. Give, God gave them their headquarters. Very soon, you'll be hearing of rebuilding the temple. And that cannot happen before the rapture. Amen? So, we are, we are in the end of the end time. What is happening in holiness revival movement is strange. And more strange things are coming on our way. God is the one doing everything. And we are ready. We shall not backslide. Amen. We shall not give up. Amen. We shall not change. Amen. We shall not fear man. Amen. We shall not fear government. Amen. We shall do the will of God alone. Amen. And the Lord shall open the door for our lives. Rise up upon your feet and begin to rejoice. And say, God, thank
thank you for making use of us as instrument of end time revival bringing out mysteries justifying us that the world may know that we are your disciples the world may know that you have chosen us and those other people that are angry against holiness revival movement the demon has spoken that they are the one that influenced them and sent their spell among them and blinded their eyes that they may not know what God is doing in their days. They may not know the, the, the Messiah of the end time that the Lord has raised up among them. I call it Messiah. The only Messiah is Jesus. But we are an instrument of salvation in the end time to the churches according to the mystery writing. If you don't know about it, go and get it to read in the internet. Yes. God's mystery writing to the Methodist church or God's message to the Methodist church in mystery writing interpreted. Go to the internet and get it for yourself. God's message to the Methodist church in mystery writing interpreted. That's end time voice. That's end time voice. Glory. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We worship you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Worship the Lord and give glory to his name. Jesus name we pray I have joy like a river joy like a river I have joy like a river in my soul ha 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 ha, ha. joy like oh yes Join me in this joy, joy like a river. I have joy like a river. Celebrate this joy, joy like a river. I have joy. You can be seated. Yes, any observation, any contribution, any question, pass your microphone along around. Observation, contribution, question. Yes, you have a contribution. Praise the Lord. I thank God for the ministry Jesus has decided to establish on earth at this time. I could through the scripture, Holy Spirit ministered to me that it take the grace of God for one to seek a true God under a certain man that had understanding of God's vision at that time. I give God all the glory. But it gave me concern when uh, a certain soul will sit on the tune. What I mean, the tune is these churches and the founders. Then you realize that many souls are pinning to hellfire and one person is sitting there as of a sudden hindering the truth. It gave me concern. I wonder, I ask God that thing. How can one who sit on the throne and you are so, your children are pinning to the hell? Pinning because one person is sitting on the throne and they close the gate of uh, light to these people. Uh, at the, uh, regard to these uh, measures, may God take glory in Jesus' the name. The person is doing a job that is paying him. One, the demons have magnified his name. Look at it in the book of Matthew, chapter 4. Matthew chapter 4. 
the Bible tells us, let's read from verse 8 rather, verse 8 to verse 10. Again, the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them and said unto him, All these things will I give thee if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Do you know what those ministers are getting? They are getting the rewards of Satan. The rewards of iniquity. The rewards, Satan's rewards for joining him to rebel against God. To destroy humanity. What is their reward? All those general overseers, superintendents, uh, senior pastors, and all these church founders and superiors in the church. See what Satan promised them. He said, he showed him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. The kingdom, everything about money, about cars, about houses, about what? Is it aeroplane, jets, about what? Ship in the sea, about what? Companies, industries, about monies of the world, different currencies. He said, these are the world and the glories of them. He said, and I will give them unto you. If thou will fall down and worship me. If you can turn those things over to me. Turn those human beings to me. Cause them to worship me. I will give you great reward. So they are sitting down there. And doing what is a reward to them as a person. They have money. They have cars. They have power. They have name in the world. They have all. Just to doom human beings. And they, will, they can now go and perish with Satan. It's a matter that needs to cry to God. So that we who have this message, don't keep quiet. Keep not silence. Go and deliver your brother. Go and deliver your sister. As for them, many of them are not changing again. How, why, why? They are well supervised and are in union. All over the world, they're joined together like this. Because people are in union. Uh, the Anglican, I mean, sorry, the evangelical churches have their own, uh, what do we call association? The Pentecostal, we do, we have a, uh, Pentecostal churches have association. So all these evil men have their own associations, supervising each other. The church is caged. That we came out of such people and are following the narrow way is, is the grace of God. It's the grace of God. I know the multitudes are following that way. Unfortunate, they kill their members and eat, drink their blood and move forward. Cast sickness upon the ones that will cast sickness. Do every evil. Separate marriage. Cause barrenness. Cause everything. Because that is Satan. The kingdom of Satan is the kingdom of wickedness. So thank your God if you have escaped. Yes, another person. Praise the Lord. <laughs> I now understand what uh, some denominations are passing through. You may not know if you are there. But with relation about United Methodist Church, one will know why things are happening the way they do in certain nations. Especially the Orthodox. Because the bishops are worshipped. If you are going to see the bishop, you will almost lie down flat. And you call him my lord. <laughs> and uh, if you don't call the bishop my lord, you are in trouble. He will say you don't have respect. You don't have regards to your bishops. And uh, if you are a pastor, a priest, the way we, uh, uh, I mean, and who are you to go to the primate? 
That's the Anglican Church order. Is, who are you to go to the primate? So it's the same with Methodist, the okay. Southern Methodist. Okay. Uh, you remember that Methodist came out from Anglican. Okay. Uh, John Wesley was an Anglican priest. He went to preach. Yes, okay. Yes, and after preaching, so. he ordained some people to take care of the, the congregation he won. So by the time he came back, they excommunicated him. That is how Methodist came about. Methodist means a new method of worship. <laughs> so with this now, I now realize that there are, there are demons dispatched to churches and denominations. Uh, uh, <laughs> I was there. I didn't know. I didn't know. I thought it was the way of the leadership of that particular but it is now my eyes are open. In fact, at the time, we were asked not to invite any other person except Anglicans to preach or to teach. There were times we were inviting Pentecostals, inviting people you know that they are real men of God. But another came that you never do that. They, are, they will take away our members. That by the time they preach the truth, and by the time they open their eyes, people will leave. Who will they hand over to? So, what I want to say is that, and again, like what Daddy said about Jerusalem, everybody should be prepared for the rapture. It is in the gospel. By the time you see Jews come together and uh, to rebuild the temple, the Muslims were at the fallen wall praying. The Muslims in Jerusalem. They were dragging it with the Jews. But thank God that God used the president of America to declare this thing has been on the UNO table. Who will declare it? It will bring a problem. But this man took the, I think God moved him to declare it. And now they are gathering the materials. And remember the Bible says that it may not be rebuilt before Christ will come. So we need to be very careful Whatever work of evangelism we are doing, we should hurry up and we should be prepared that anything can happen at any time. There are some people that we are, still, are still saying, where is his coming? Just like in 2 Peter chapter 3. If you read from verse 1, getting to 4, you will see these people. They say, where is he coming? That since our fathers, they have been saying he's coming, he's coming, he's coming. So it may take some people unawares with all this saying of people. But I thank God that Peter made it clear here. Look at verse 4. He says, And saying, Where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. If you read from verse 1 down, you see it clearly. You have to know that you don't allow anything to distract you. You have to put your hands on the plow and don't look back. Thank you. Now, there is this, uh, give it to our brother, he has been an Angli Anglican, uh, uh, is it uh, priest, reverend, or whatever. Uh, I don't, you have been an Anglican what? Okay, general title, pastor. <laughs> I, I, I was ordained. We are called uh, reverend or uh, priest. We are priests. Okay, okay. We are the only people now, that are permitted. There is yeah. this thing, that mentality that is in the heart of the Anglicans, that if they are going out or if you are coming in, you must worship the altar. If you are going out, you must again bow down and worship the altar. What is inside the altar? Can't. We believe that, uh, in fact, uh, God is there first. Secondly, the bishop is there. You have to <laughs> worship him. You have to bow down. And if you come in again, you bow down before you go to your seat. So that is just it. You know, we, that came from the Catholic. Okay, they are came going, from uh, the Catholic. Remember, we, we, we are related uh, to... That is yes. a, a part of uh, uh, Catholic you carried. Yes, sir. And the, the, wearing, the, the wearing of the the, the mitre in the church that the long yes by the bishops and the, some 
senior priests. Yes. Is there. You see pastors wearing some Against things. Against the scripture that says yes. is a man if a man is praying or prophesying with his head covered, he dishonors his head. That one doesn't apply to the, the Anglican church. Blindness, eternal blindness has taken over people. They are following traditions. They have left the word of God. Look at it in the book of Mark chapter 7. Mark chapter 7. We read verse 6 to verse 10. And then verse 13. He answered and said unto them, Well, had Isaiah prophesied of you hypocrites, as it is written, These people honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. How be it in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men, for laying aside the commandment of God, ye hold the tradition of men, as the washing of pots and cups, and many, uh, many other such like things ye do. And he said unto them, Full well ye reject the commandment of God, that ye may keep your own tradition. Again in verse 13, Making the word of God of none effect through your tradition, which ye have delivered, and many such like things do ye. Did you hear that Peter was wearing a cap in the church? Paul the apostle was wearing a cap in the church. Where did the Anglican bishop get their own from? Tradition. Where did tradition come from? The devil. Fallen human beings. Look at what tradition can do. In the book of Colossians chapter 2. The Lord warns us against traditions. Colossians chapter 2 verse 6 to verse 8. As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith, as ye have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Let's read verse 8 together. One, two, go. Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men after the rudiments of the world and not after Christ tradition spoiled Christianity they cannot trace a scripture to bowing before the altar or whoever is in the altar the Jews in their Old Testament were asked to pray towards Jerusalem Facing a particular direction. Is Christ, are Christians asked to pray facing a particular direction now? Why are you bowing to a, to, towards a particular direction? Why don't you bow towards your, your right? Why are you not bowing towards your left? If you want to say where God is. Who told you that God is in the front and is not at your back? And that God is not in your right hand side, is not in your left hand side? Who told you that God is not up and is not down? That you are bowing to a particular direction. Is it not Muslims that do that? Traditions that are spoiling people. And are getting them to hell. Move. Just be moving. Hell. 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 And hell is enlarging herself. Hell is increasing every day. May God bring open the eyes of the Anglicans to drop the traditions of their fathers and follow the word of God. In Jesus' name we pray. Yes, any, any other contribution? Praise the Lord. I want to say that when the message of the Methodists came for the first time about the mystery writing, in my state, our state coordinator said, uh, Which state is that? Delta state. Okay, okay. So, so you should contribute money according as you are led to give to get more copies to give out to people. So I want to say that because you have said that the Methodist Church, 
the the separated into two group. Some accepted the message, some do not accept. So if you can give this copy, if you can get this revelation now to give uh, to them, so they can give it out to those other unbelieving. Maybe you can also recover some out of those crowd. Sure. Praise the Lord. Uh, the message is recorded. You can get it and send. It shall be in the internet. You can get it to as many as you can to deliver people because every time God is bringing strategy that will win people faster. That's why if we know what to say, say it now. Maybe a million people shall be delivered by just one statement. Say it now. So we have said it now. Yes, any other person? Hallelujah. I really want to thank God for this very message that God gave to um, Mommy Linda. It's still it's really an eye-opening. I just want to give a little contribution. That since the Lord has opened her eyes to see that beast, and the beast said, he hits his chest that they will not receive the message, that he will follow them up. I am just led by the Spirit of God that, go, that God should give the grace of God to our mommy and to daddy should follow those people up because the devil, as he said it, he will do it to take the grace of God for those ones who have received it not to go back. God will help us in Jesus' name. Who has the final say? Who has the final say, brother? Jehovah. Jehovah. Who has the final say, sister? Who has the final say, brother? Jehovah. Has no final say, sister. <laughs> Satan has no final say, brother. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. Toss my life around. Toss the kiss around. Much prayer was prayed. And even the brethren were told, rise up and pray. The, 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 devil, the devil has no power. He will not be in that place. He was in the place because people didn't know. Now that they have known. Now that you know a snake is inside that hole. That snake must die. Yes, another person. Praise the Lord. I want to thank the Lord so much for this privilege, you know, for what God is doing in this movement and what God is doing through this movement. Through our daddy, Pastor Porika, through our mommy, Mommy Linda, I pray that God will pour more grace upon you in the name of Jesus. 
that this work that God has committed into your hands, that this work, the Lord will give you grace sufficient for it in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. When the message was going on, something I picked there, he said that the enemy have cast a spare of hatred, a spare of, of uh, fear and pride, yes, and pride yes. into the dimensional churches to hate Horemo and then they will be proud against Horemo and then fear that Horemo will steal their members. They shouldn't open the door for Horemo, but I thank God that God that has the key he has the key in his hand. He will open it whenever he wishes to do so. And souls will be delivered in the mighty name of Jesus. I just want to give an instance of what is going on all over. Sometimes I visit the church, the redeemed church. Sometimes I go to deeper life. Like what is going on in the church today, you see the pride. The pride has, has come over, you know, the churches I know. For, for instance, deeper life. I was in the church a few days ago, a few Sundays back. And while I was there, in fact, I just saw that the Holy Spirit is not, is not just here. I don't understand. A lady came with a very seductive clothes, kind of dressing, and she was sitting right in front. If it was deeper life in those days, they would either tell that lady, please move back, or they'll get something to cover her. I was there. I was watching to see what the usher or the women coordinator would do. Nothing. I was there some Sundays before that very one that I saw that. And I saw a lady was sitting there. Her whole back was exposed. Everything. I told the women please can you get the scarf? Let's cover. I said no, just leave her. After the service we will talk. We will talk to her. I forgot about that. So but this one that the lady was dressed seductively sitting right in front. I was expecting that the ushers will summon her call her out or give her something to cover herself. Nothing. I was holding myself. I said God, just help me to keep quiet. No, I can't keep quiet. I stood up. I went to the usher. I said, please, usher, call that lady. Let her leave that place. That seat she's sitting. What she's wearing is bad. I was, to my greatest hope, I was thinking the usher would go and you know, get her out of that place. She didn't even move. She was sitting there. And as the pastor was there, after they saw the scripture, the pastor came up. It was direct to that place. As, 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 as they said, okay, let's all have our seat. As she was taking her seat, definitely, you know, something that is very short. Her legs will be open. That was where the pastor I was watching. It was as if God said, just watch and see. The pastor was just watching everything. Uh -uh. As the lady was sitting, his eyes were as if it was peeping. At that point, I said, God, I want to leave this place. Just help me. And the pastor himself could not say, lady, leave that place. Go to the back. Ah, it pained me. I said, oh, look at the blindness. Look at the pride. They have rejected this truth, the word of mercy. That God has sent to the church to revive the church. They are busy carrying the name, carrying the name, but the holiness is gone. Nothing. The youth are wayward. The youth are wayward. You can see the practical worldliness among them. In fact, you will shed tears. Each time I go there, I want to shed tears. I was also at the redeemed Christian church of God, and I was there. It's lady, it was Bible study, and you see the youth in front, they're all wearing short, short, short. She opened her legs. The pastor was. I was holding my I look at her, I said, please, can you close your legs? She looked at me with a very bad offensive eye. And then she said, who is there looking? I said, eh, who is there looking? Is the pastor not there? She didn't even answer. Nothing. I was there. Even when they say testimony, when they say contribution, after the mess, I contributed. I talked about worldliness. In fact, one of the pastors that came to minister that day, he was not really okay. By looking at me, you could see the hatred. I was, I've been going visiting the Redeemed Christian Church of God before then. But that very day, the pastor that came to minister, when he saw me, in fact, I could see that he was not happy. I was wondering. Then you will know that really, these people really, after the message, I took some CDs, I went and gave, I said, sir, I'm from Holiness. He said, I know about Pastor Rica. I know him. And then after that, but I could see that there was no welcome, you know, on his face. And then I left. But I discovered when I left, I had the intention of keep on going there, to keep on going there, to be visited and giving them messages. I gave one of the junior pastor message, and then he texted me over the phone. He said, in fact, God bless you, bless Pastor Rika. This message, in fact, I love it. I have given to one other pastor. You see, some we accept. Why some? Those other ones, is the head, is like the regional head. When he saw me, he didn't like it. So I discovered that since then, the mind of going there, I discovered 
something I said that what has removed this the love going there now I discovered that I'm weak I passed there I don't have the mind of going there again and I discovered that there is a power walking on you know people when people come with the truth with the light I discovered that there are demons who chase them out if you're not prayerful if you're not careful you will may never go there again that was what I was just thinking in my mind and this has made me to really see that we must be very violent in our prayers now. We must be very violent in our evangelism because the devil is not resting. When you see that, yes, the light is coming here now, he will rise up with his, with his team. But I know that God has given us the grace. We will be very prayerful, violent in prayer. Let's not be weak. I know God has given us grace and he will give us more grace. This battle, we will win it. The Lord has given us grace. We are victorious. In the mighty name of Jesus. I have a lot to say, but because of time, time might not permit me. Praise the Lord. The last person. Praise the Lord. Please let's open to Psalm 15. Psalm number 15. Lord, who shall abide in thy tabernacle? Who shall dwell in thy holy hills? He that walketh uprightly and walketh righteousness and speaketh the truth in his heart. He that backbiteth not with his tongue, nor doeth evil to his neighbor, nor taketh up a reproach against his neighbor. Verse number four. That is exactly where I am actually going to speak. In whose eyes a vile person is contained but he honoreth them that fear the Lord. He that sweareth to his own heart and changeth not. Praise the Lord. I thank God for the grace, for the chance, for the privilege I have to have known Daddy for more than a decade now. Uh, mine is an admonition. If I have the power to change your name, I will change you to Peter the Rock. Because Peter was addressed the Rock. And we have a proverb in my dialect that the rain that beats on the Rock makes it shine. You will shine and shine and shine in Jesus' name. Amen. Without fear of intimidation, anybody from any quarter, you have stood on the path of the truth. You have sworn to your heart, and I know you will not change in Jesus' name. Please carry on. No weapon of the enemy, no threats from the pits of hell shall be able to overcome you and your wife in this mission in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's rise up upon our feet and have time to pray. I will call upon the Lord Who is worthy to be praised So shall I be saved from my enemy Blessed be the Lord May the rock of my salvation be exalted. The Lord reign. Blessed be the rock. May the rock of my salvation be exalted. Open your mouth and begin to worship God. Thank him for what he's doing in Holiness Revival Movement worldwide. Thank him for carrying us, showing his mighty hand part time, mighty hand part time, revealing things and damaging and destroying the works of the devil over the lives of humanity worldwide. Worship Jesus, worship him for what he's doing. Thank him and worship him. Worship Jesus for handling cases, issues, and destroying the work of the devil in holiness revival ministry. In this movement, 
God is using this moment to bruise the head of Satan. Worship him because God is still going far with us. There are many things yet to be manifest, yet to be done by God. There are many things that God will still do wonderful things. Yet I hate. Lord, we worship you. We magnify your name. We exalt your name. We thank you, Father. We worship you, Father. We worship you, Father. We worship you, Father. We worship you, Father. We magnify your name. We exalt your name. We thank you for your movement. Thank you for this end time movement. Lord, we worship you. We magnify your name. In Jesus' name, we pray. There are things that the devil has actually done in denominations. And that's why many denominations, they don't allow even members of holiness revival movement are persecuted how much more to bring a pastor to come and preach on the altar they will not do that the door is closed but the lord will open that door these people that are caged the lord will deliver them we want to take authority against hatred the spell of hatred that the devil has sent that the power of god will scatter that hatred God will destroy hatred from these people against Horimo. God will destroy hatred. Hatred shall be destroyed. That spirit of hatred, that spell of hatred, they will all be scattered. They will all be scattered. The spell that is cast on these denominations to close their door against the truth. Oh God, we pray you will destroy the works of the devil. Destroy that power of hatred. Destroy the power of hatred that Satan has done against the movement. Oh Lord, making people not to love your truth, not to love your message, not to love your movement. Oh God, arise and destroy. Arise and destroy. Oh Lord, in your message see you will arise arise against the work of the devil in these churches oh god arise oh god arise oh god arise and let your enemy be scattered let your enemy be scattered the father that hatred the hatred that is sent in these denominations against your truth against your message oh lord the people belong to you arise and deliver the people in the name of jesus Arise, O oh God! 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 In the name of Jesus. Arise, O oh God, and deliver the people. Deliver your people from the hand of the devil. Deliver your people from the hand of the devil. In the name of Jesus. Deliver the people from the hand of the devil in the name of Jesus. Arise, O oh God. 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 Oh God. And deliver the people from power of hatred. From this bondage of hatred. From the bondage of hatred against Holy Mo. From the bondage of hatred against the truth. Against righteousness and holiness against the ministry holiness revival ministry your movement oh god deliver the churches deliver the denominations save them oh god save them oh god arise and save them in jesus name we pray fear of losing their members they claim it is their members but the people belong to jesus they are not the owners of the people. We want to take authority against the spirit of fear. That is causing most of these churches, their authority, the authority in these churches to fear. They are not going to, they, that the members do not belong to them. They belong to Jesus. We want to pray that the fear the devil has put in them, God will deliver them. This fear, doctrinal fear, God will deliver them. The mercy of God will come upon them because there are many that are there that are, that are looking for the truth. But, but they have been caged. We want to pray that God will break them loose from the bondage of fear. Open your mouth and pray. Father, we pray that Father, you will lose these people. Lose your people from fear. These churches that are caged by the bondage of fear, lose them, oh God. 
oh God, deliver the, uh, the leaders from fear, oh God. These people, the people under them belong to you. They do not belong to any man or woman. Jesus, you are the creator of all humanity. Deliver them from this bondage of fear that the devil has put upon them. That you open their eyes to see that father it is for the salvation of the people for your message to come in to save them it is for the salvation of your people for your message to come in to save them look them from the bondage of fear look them oh god look them let the power of fear be destroyed over these denominations worldwide the power of fear let the power of fear be destroyed over these denominations worldwide in the name of jesus jesus deliver them from the bondage of fear deliver them from the bondage of fear these denominations under the bondage of fear fear of losing their members which members do not belong to them belong to you the members belong to you oh god in your mercy deliver them in jesus name we pray the bible said god resists the proud but give grace to the humble we want to pray that god will humble all these general overseers the ones that are proud god will humble them pride goes before a fall they will fall god will humble them that god will resist them and cause these members under them to be free and let the message reach forth to them oh god your word said you resist the proud giving grace to the humble oh god humble these denominational leaders the leaders in these churches non-denominational and denominational leaders that are proud humble them oh god humble them oh god resist them according to your word you say you resist the proud you resist the proud but give grace to the humble we are humble before you we pray that father you would give them you humble them to humble themselves to allow god your message of truth your message of righteousness your message of holiness to come into their churches the lord you will humble them you will humble them you humble the proud you humble the proud you resist the proud you give grace to the humble oh god give us the grace give us the grace to spread the message to reach out to them humble them oh god resist them in their pride resist them in their pride resist them and humble them the general overseers general superintendents the bishops that are opposing your truth humble them oh god humble them oh god humble them oh god resist them oh god resist them oh god resist them oh god for pride they are hindering your message oh lord your word said you would do so do it oh lord according to your word do it oh lord according to your word in the name of jesus do it oh lord according to your word in the name of jesus do it oh god do it oh god do it oh god do it oh god in the name of jesus humble the proud humble the proud denominational churches captured by pride deliver them from the bondage of pride humble them oh god in the name of jesus humble them oh god in the name of jesus thank you father In Jesus name we pray from the beginning of the ministry our daddy has been moving from church to church ministry to ministry gatherings and was has been ministering the word of God boldly not fearing faces to declare the truth the boldness has been there and when the Lord brought mommy because many people don't understand and we we, we we it's good we let them know because some people thought the holiness revival moment founded as a result of the revelational testimony of our mom but it's not so but the lord brought her the movement has been there the lord now brought her in and declared his message boldly gave her the boldness to judge in fact to speak out the truth not fearing faces and the thing is still on we want to pray that this boldness will translate on all members coordinators will carry this boldness 
fearlessly. You said you will carry this boldly. That the Lord will make us bold to spread the message of truth. Boldness. Oh God, grant unto us that we give up boldness to speak the mystery of the kingdom. To declare it, oh God. Oh Lord, give us that boldness. All members of the movement worldwide, fearlessly, not fearing any face. No, any face in the faces that may look like the face of a lion, we will not fear their faces. We will declare your message. More of your message that comes out, you will give us the boldness to declare, to declare the truth wholeheartedly, to declare the truth uncompromisingly, to declare the truth resolutely, we to declare the truth of God in spite all odds, in spite of all opposition. Oh God, we will stand for the truth, ready to die for the truth, ready to live for the truth, ready to die for the truth. Ready Ready to die for the truth. Help us to declare this truth. Pour boldness upon all of us. Members of holiness with other movement worldwide. Let your boldness be poured immensely. Let your boldness be poured in great measure upon all of us worldwide. Not to fear faces. Not to fear general overseers. Not to fear general superintendents. Not to fear bishops. But to declare your message. As it is, we declare it. 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 Not adding to it or removing it. Oh Lord, give us that boldness. Baptize us with boldness, oh God. Baptize us with boldness. Baptize us with boldness. Baptize us with boldness. More of your boldness upon us. That we will not fear. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. The message you have just listened to is a production of Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide. Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide is a non-denominational ministry that is given to the propagation of Christ's righteousness and holiness in churches and nations of the world through crusades, revival meetings, production and spread of holiness literature and materials. For other spiritual materials, messages or inquiries, contact us on 0816-902-3948 or 0805-683-4323. You can also reach us through our email address, holinessrevivalmovement at gmail.com. God bless you. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not His Son into the world condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Hallelujah. Jesus, I believe in you. You are my Lord and Savior. I believe
I believe in you. You are the living Savior. I believe in you. I love you, Lord. I love you. I believe. Jesus, I believe.